Sheldon, I'm more than smart enough to take your class. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just simply can't know everything. Hi, and welcome to Top 10 Lists, where today we'll be looking at 20 facts that you may not have known about the Big Bang Theory. And before we get started, we're also hooked. Oh my. <laughs> Excuse me. Number 20. Amy gets spanked. For real. Originally, the spanking scene from the fish guts displacement between Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik was supposed to take place off camera, but everyone liked it so much that they kept it in. Also, Jim Parsons really was spanking her. The best number is 73. <laughs> number 19. Sheldon's favorite number. As explained on the show by Sheldon Cooper through excruciating detail, apparently the best number, as well as his favorite, is 73, though this was also made obvious by the collection of shirts the character wears, as a good amount of them hold the number 73. Interestingly enough, the actor who plays Sheldon, Jim Parsons, was born in 1973, so that could be the reason for it as well. If you're in Stockholm September 6th, Come and visit the exhibition, The Science of the Big Bang Theory. Number 18, Science Consultant. The show is a lot more dedicated to being factually correct than most people give them credit for. This looks like some serious stuff. Leonard, did you do this? Actually, that's my work. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, it's just some quantum mechanics. Granted, there are some inaccuracies from time to time, but that's for another list, and it's the effort that counts anyways. David Salzberg is an astroparticle physicist who helps with the show by proofreading scripts and meeting with the producers, writers, actors, set directors, prop masters, and other crew. Also, all those complex equations you see are actually real. Hey guys, I'm on the set of The Big Bang Theory, and if you ever wanted to know where the stairs by the elevator lead, I'm going to take you down them now. Number 17, Out of Order. Now, if you've ever been to an actual set, then this one's pretty obvious, but the three floors of the guy's apartment building are actually just the same set redecorated for each time. For the sake of a recurring gag, aka the broken elevator, the actors and crew have to recreate the scene to make each floor different every single time. Number 16. The Theorists Any success story is going to have imitators, but they're never as good as the original. With how successful that the Big Bang Theory has become, there have been a couple of remakes of the show in foreign countries. In 2010, there was a show called The Theorists, which aired in Belarus. However, the cast eventually found out that they were just generic, off-brand versions of the show that we know and love, and they quit. Number 15. Vanity Cards some show creators enjoy putting little Easter eggs in to mess with their audience, but it could be a plot hole or even a real-life reference, or even linked to a completely different show. In Chuck Lorre's case, before the Warner Brothers logo pops up in the end credits, one of Lorre's vanity cards, a piece of his own writing, pops up on screen for just a second or two. They're different each time, by the way, and they're actually pretty funny to read. Number 14. Apartment 4A Sheldon and Leonard's Apartment 4A is one of the most iconic sets on television in recent years, and it's been mentioned to be located in Pasadena. And as it turns out, the address itself, 2311 Los Robles, is across the street from the Colorado Avenue Chevron station. And the Chevron station is real, while the apartment is not. My burps taste like cranberry juice. <laughs> and there's your answer. Number 13. Apartment 314. 3.1459. It's not just an endless math equation or even a delicious recipe for pie, it's also the number to Amy's apartment on the show. 314, that is. And yes, it is because of the pie equation. Number 12. Lenny, Penny, and Kenny. Every show goes through a rough draft process before airing, and the Big Bang Theory isn't really any different. 
Tons of scripts were rewritten, cast members were switched out, but even the show's title was tampered with. Originally pitched as Lenny, Penny, and Kenny, it was needless to say that our main characters' names would have been different as well. No, Mom, our relationship is definitely over. I'm not going back. Number 11. How She Became Penny so we know the original title for the show was Lenny, Penny, and Kenny, but before that, Penny's name was actually set to be Katie, and it was planned to be played by Amanda Walsh. During rehearsals of the pilot episode, however, the audience and network executives weren't too much of a fan of how the character was played. So she was replaced with the lovable Kaylee Cuco. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 million years ago expansion started. Wait. Number 10. The Original Theme Song By now, we're all familiar with the catchy tune at the beginning of the show, but it was originally a completely different song in the pilot. New neighbor? Evidently. Significant improvement over the old neighbor. They quickly changed it before it aired, which is why the pilot is the only episode without an intro sequence, and it was planned to be Thomas Dolby's tune, She Blinded Me With Science, but later was then used as a short MIDI version as Howard's ringtone in the Lizard Spock expansion episode. Who are you talking to? Oh, just this guy I met at school. Oh, great. We're still dating, right? <laughs> Number 9. Leonard's Glasses in the show, Leonard wears decently thick rimmed glasses, but what's more interesting is how Johnny Galecki, who plays Leonard, actually doesn't. Instead, he's just wearing frames without lenses to offer a more nerdy look, and admittedly, it does work pretty well for him. Just come here! Bazinga. Number 8. Bazinga. One of the writers for The Big Bang Theory, Stephen Engel, is apparently a little bit of a practical joker on set and would use the word bazinga whenever he played a joke on another crew member, which apparently involved a taped up grapefruit in the writer's office. It basically just means I got you, which is what Sheldon now also uses it for. Can you sing Soft Kitty? <laughs> what? Number 7. Soft Kitty Known best for helping Sheldon feel better in sickness, Soft Kitty's sort of become a household title. But did you know that it actually exists outside of the show? Well, sort of. The song actually dates back to the 1930s and was titled Warm Kitty by Edith Newland. It led to a lawsuit, however, in 2015 from Edith's currently living family, but in short, they didn't legally own the rights to the song, so the suit was dropped recently in May of 2017. Okay, so let me see if I got this. Leonard, uh -huh. Howard, and I'm sorry, what was your name again? <laughs> Number 6. Raj's Selective Mutism Raj was never really too smooth with the ladies, and actually struggled a lot with selective mutism during the show's first six seasons. That is, unless he drank a lot. Anybody need a refill? Where did my life go, Benny? <laughs> the idea for Raj's mutism stemmed from the show's co-creator, Bill Prady. At his past job as a computer programmer, one of his co-workers dealt with the same problem. On the other hand, the man who plays Raj in the show clearly doesn't have the same problem, considering that he's married to former Miss India, Neha Kapoor. <laughs> to Sheldon, live long and prosper, Leonard Nimoy. Number 5. Not a Star Trek fan? Well, if you've seen at least a handful of episodes, then you might be familiar with Sheldon Cooper's obsession with Star Trek. He'll often share a reference to the legendary science fiction program on the show. As it turns out though, the person who plays Sheldon, Jim Parsons, has admitted to never actually seeing a single episode. He's also never seen Doctor Who, which is another one of Sheldon's favorites. Look guys, for the future I don't mind killing the big spiders, but you have to at least try with the little ones. Number 4. Penny's Last Name 
It's been somewhat used as a running gag between show producers that we're never actually going to know what Penny's last name is. It's never once been addressed in the show, despite us knowing the last names of every other main character. What are you doing? Playing the theremin. <laughs> Number three, musically gifted. The theremin is strongly considered to be one of the most difficult instruments to learn. However, when Sheldon plays it on the show, Jim Parsons, he's actually really playing the instrument, and quite well compared to most. Also, Johnny Galecki isn't half bad on the piano, and Maya Bialik actually learned how to play the harp for her character Amy. Number 2. Relationships Johnny Galecki seems to be pretty popular in both his on-screen and off-screen relationships considering how his character Leonard and Kaylee Kuko's Penny became a couple on the show. It does go deeper than that though, because as it turns out, the two were actually dating in real life during the first few seasons. Galecki also dated Sarah Gilbert, who is Leslie Winkle on The Big Bang Theory, during his time on Roseanne, where the two also dated on screen. Number 1. Viewership now, to be fair, it's not much of a surprise that The Big Bang Theory is the most watched television series in North America, all the more reason to have a foreign copycat. It also makes sense that the cast are among the highest paid in television actors and actresses. Oh, and it may also be why advertising on the show is so expensive, being about $285,000 US dollars for a 30 second commercial. And with that said, we conclude what are 20 facts that you probably didn't know about The Big Bang Theory. Feel free to let us know in the comments today what you thought about the video, and one lucky person who leaves a comment and is also subscribed will have the chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Click that notification bell and leave a like on the video, and have yourselves an excellent day.